Skin black, can't feel that. Rock a band and I like two pack. I've been there. Rock a do rag or wave cab. I lay my shit. This has What's going on, Gooners and Gooners? Welcome back to the channel, and don't forget to hit that like button. Really helps me out, guys. It's Newcastle versus Arsenal. It's gonna serve up a cracking Premier League battle at St. James Park on Saturday evening, 5.30. We know that Tonali was one of Newcastle's biggest signings in the summer, and he's been suspended for 10 months. And the Italian Football Federation has put that in place for betting on matches. But I know he made a bright start to the season, but they've still got a decent squad. And St. James Park, in my opinion, is one of the toughest places to go and win. But we proved that. It was a complimentary, really, to the job that Mikel done at the end of last season. And also, Arteta has been complimenting Eddie Howe at Newcastle, saying, huge credit to him. He's transformed the club, the environment and the atmosphere he's created in a team, and the belief in what they do. And Eddie Howe hopes Isak will be fit for the first game back after the international break. But for me, he still has a long way to go, so I don't think he's going to make the match. Arsenal have enjoyed a good record against Newcastle in their history though. 30 clean sheets against Newcastle. That's the most that any side has kept against another in Premier League history. Arsenal now winning eight of their last visits at St. James Park really shows how good that they play up there in terms of the form guide. The Newcastle are joint high scorers in the league and the best finishers with a shot conversion of 18.6. Now Newcastle will certainly put David Rea's goal under pressure and he hasn't had much pressure this season due to the fact that Arsenal protect their goalkeeper so well. But their main striker, Callum Wilson, he has a staggering average of a goal every 60 minutes so far in the Premier League. Now Newcastle have won one of their last 10 Premier League games against Arsenal, failing to score on eight of those games. Now Newcastle, of course, this season unbeaten in six games in their last six games scoring at least twice in each of their last five so in terms of the injury guys Taggart is going to join Javier Manquello who's got a groin problem Lewis Miley who's ill Isak who still has that groin injury uh, Steve Butman he's been out for quite a while so we're not going to see that him coming back from that knee injury Elliot Anderson who's got a back problem Jacob Murphy shoulder and Harvey Barnes with a foot issue also Joe Willock will likely drop out um, because he has some fitness issues as well so Bruno Gamares, Nick Pope, Karen Trippier, Almeron and Wilson they'll all return to the starting 11. As for Arsenal well for Arsenal, over the last three Premier League seasons, Enketia has managed to score 13 goals across 25 starts. And that's meant that he's had a call-up for the national team as a reserve player. And as I said on the forum, guys, to you lot last week, when was the last time that a backup striker has been called up into the England team? I don't, understand. I don't know when that's ever happened before. Enketia, he has a goal every 137 minutes. So that's decent for Eddie, and he could make his 100th Premier League appearance in this game. The key for Eddie, though, guys, is while he scored 17 goals in 20 starts at home at the Emirates Stadium, his away record isn't that great. He really scores goals away from home. So I really would like him to break that duck down and get some consistency in his game, because the Gunners need that, with the news that Jesus would probably be out for another two or three weeks. Now also, the Gunners lost ML Smith-Rowe to a fresh knee problem, and now he's been ruled out for nearly a month. Well, Arteta says weeks, I would say a month. Also, Thomas Partey still dealing with that muscle issue, where it is he might not even make it back to the team this year. And then Gabriel Jesus with the hamstring injury again is probably not going to make it back until December. And look guys, we have to be positive about these things. No point of us thinking they're going to be back next week when they're really not even in training. So the return of Martin Odegaard looked decent when he came on against West Ham, got the goal, looked way more fresher and obviously didn't look haggard down by the amount of minutes he's played. So he's going to be back. Saka, Martinelli will be there, Declan Rice and Saliba all back into the team, which is going to put us at our strongest 11 for that game. Now Arsenal's play is different from last season, guys. 
they aren't maybe as fun to watch or expressive and it simply is because of party and jesus they just cannot stay fit i can't believe over the first two or three months of the season how much injuries we've had to deal with it's completely different from last season but it's hurting the team and funny enough most of the stats are identical from last season after 10 games 2.3 shots being created per game and creating 2.6 big chances versus this season's 2.4 chances also last season they had 15.6 shots per game against 14.4 shots per game so it's not as big a difference as you lot might think but arsenal might not be as dynamic guys but they're a much more mature team and they make it harder for you to build up the play against them by zoning you into a shape in your own half that is difficult to come out of they manage the middle well and they protect the flanks most importantly they're number one in the league against shot against so it's going to make it difficult for newcastle we know because of last season at st james bark eddie howe knows all about that when arsenal beat them 2-0 arsenal did not give them any space to do anything in 90 minutes last season's win over there was one of the most impressive and exciting for Arteta's game management skills showing much growth as a manager in my opinion so for me guys Arteta needs to take a look at what happened against Chelsea and the West Ham games teams are looking to play over the top towards the sides on us away from Declan Rice where they can get quick turnovers against Ben White and Zinchenko this is the reason why I'm saying you probably have to start Tomiyasu because against a team like this, with dynamic players, and we're talking about Almarion here, with dynamic players, you don't want Shinchenko losing any ground to them. So for me, Tomiyatsu comes in. If he doesn't, Shinchenko at left back will get absolutely roasted on that right hand flank. So for me, guys, if we play Jorginho and Rice in the midfield together, I would expect Rice to play in that more left centre midfield number eight role rather than a six with Jorginho just because he can help in attack and he can come back in a double pivot so I'm going with Raya in goal Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel and Tomiyasu as my left back in the midfield I'm going with Rice and Jorginho as your hybrid duo and then Odegaard as your main number 10 I'm going with Saka on the right Martinelli on the left and Enketia up front my prediction for this game guys it's a tough one because you know exactly what you're getting with Newcastle. They have been fantastic this season. They got into the Champions League last year. They had a 4-0 drubbing of PSG, which I think is their best result today. And also, um, they just have a better squad now. That being said, Arsenal are probably the best away team in terms of goals. Four clean sheets already to their name. And I think they'll come here and make it very difficult for Newcastle. I'm going with an Arsenal 1-0 away win. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I will speak to you in the next one. Peace out, guys. I'm trying to be a black kid. I'm trying to be a black kid. MLK, Jay-Z, MJ. I'm trying to be a black